the full extent of the catastrophic damage Hurricane Maria has done to Puerto Rico is not yet known. The storm ravaged the island on September 20 and then continued to deluge it with rain the next day. It knocked out the electrical grid, it will take months to restore power to the whole island and put an end to most mobile communication. It rendered many roads and bridges impassable. In the storm's immediate aftermath, before relief workers distributed satellite phones, some parts of the island could be contacted only by runners. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is providing help, relying in part on the $15.3 billion in funding that Congress allocated for disaster relief earlier in September, after Hurricanes Harvey and Irma struck Texas and Florida, respectively. But the island's governor, Ricardo Roslo, is in no doubt that more help is needed. Otherwise, he says, the island faces a humanitarian crisis. Even if that plea is met, it is unlikely to stop the long term damage to the island. Before the storm, Puerto Rico already faced an economic collapse. Having borrowed too much and seen its economy shrink almost every year since 2005, the island commenced bankruptcy like proceedings in May. That was possible because of a federal law passed in 2016. Until then, unlike states and municipalities, it had no way to escape its unpayable $123 billion in debt and pension obligations worth 180% of gross national income, nigh. The price for the escape route was a new financial oversight board appointed in Washington. The government had hoped to balance its budget over three years by imposing austerity worth over 5% of nigh annually. But even before Maria struck, the Oversight Board did not think the plan was credible. It was insisting on furloughs for the island's public sector workers to ensure the targets were met. Mr. Roslow refused to comply and faced a lawsuit over the matter in the island's federal court. He said he was willing to go to prison over the matter. That dispute now looks like a sideshow, just as well, given that the hurricane has caused the court to close indefinitely. Puerto Ricans, who are American citizens, have been abandoning the island. At last count, it was losing on net 68,000 people a year, or 1.9% of its population. Those who have stayed are aging, like the rest of America. Now Puerto Rico must also contend with people fleeing a natural disaster. A recent working paper by economists Lee Boston, Matthew Kahn, Paul Rode and Maria Yang was examines American natural disasters from 1920 to 2010. It finds that a severe disaster lowers net migration into a given county by between 2.3 and 5.9 percentage points. Puerto Rico is no county it has fully 3.4 meters residents. But even an effect on a tenth of that size would be disastrous, calculates Lyman Stone, an economist who blogs about migration. The effect also seems greatest in areas which are prone to disasters, perhaps because residents fear a repeat episode. In Puerto Rico's case, such a fear would be especially well-founded, given that climate change is likely to increase the intensity of hurricanes. Mr. Roslow warns of a mass exodus. However, the island may not see the large-scale depopulation that follows some catastrophes. Moving requires resources, and 44% of Puerto Rico's residents earn less than the federal poverty line. Many high earners have already departed. In the decade to 2016, the number of surgeons and physicians on the island fell by almost on a third. A new IMF study finds that extreme weather events increase emigration, but only from places that people can afford to leave. That, however, is hardly a comforting thought. The IMF's other findings are equally grim. Seven years after an average hurricane, typhoon or cyclone strikes a small country, output per head is almost 2.5 percent lower than it otherwise would have been. Even 20 years after being hit, economies typically have not fully recovered. What can be done apart from ensuring the island gets immediate help, including suspending the Jones Act, which requires all ships sailing between American ports to be built, owned and crewed by American citizens, there are several ways Congress could support Puerto Rico's economy in the long term. Lawmakers could extend the earned income tax credit, a wage topic for low earners, to the island's residents. They could ensure Medicaid. Health insurance for the poor is adequately funded. Federal Medicaid contributions to Puerto Rico, unlike those to states, are capped. And it could waive the usual requirement that the island pay for 1,025% of its disaster relief. 
The argument against doing these things is that Puerto Ricans do not pay federal income taxes. But the alternative is a vicious cycle of austerity, recession and a shrinking population, now compounded by a natural disaster.